Hello, and welcome back to Hawkeye's House of Horrors. And uh, you know what month it is? Well, it's October, so that's a month of Halloween, and I've decided to put some uh, pumpkins up and light some candles, and and it's perfect because I'm going to be bringing to you guys uh, some more horror movies in it. You know what? I think I'm going to try a, and bring them out a little bit more um, more often than I've been doing just because it's Halloween. And I'm in the spirit mm -hmm, to uh, watch some horror movies and share them with you. And, um, yeah, so that's what I'm going to do. And, uh, once again, I am Hawkeye. And, uh, first off, uh, for this month, I'm going to bring to you the remake of uh, William Lustig's Maniac. Now, uh, Lustig in this one, he was a producer in this one, uh, but this is a remake, and I've seen it twice now. And I am afraid, I or I was afraid, after seeing those Superman movies, I was like, oh no, am I not going to like this one um, after enjoying it the first time? And you know what? I actually liked it even more. Uh, this is uh, a really good one. It definitely goes in uh, di a different directions than the original, which I'm really uh, thankful for. Uh, personally, I find it kind of ballsy in um, just when thinking of the original Maniac with Joe Spinell, uh, who they cast in Elijah Wood. Very different looking actor. Uh, but it works, and it really works well. So I'm going to bring that for you today, uh, Maniac. And it was released through IFC Midnight. Now, um, I've got stuff written down on a piece of paper with my own uh, writing, so I apologize. I'm going to be looking down maybe a lot. Uh, I've got some pretty bad uh, handwriting. When I read this, I think, man, I, uh, I should have become a doctor. Um, I can hardly read this. But anyways, um, this one, uh, it was uh, released in uh, 2012. Um, it was shown uh, first at May the 26th at Cannes, uh, was released on January the 2nd, 2013 in France, and June the 21st, 2013 in the States. Now, this now, film was directed by Frank Calhoun. Now, he had directed, um, I believe this is the only film of his I have seen, but a couple others I see that he has directed uh, were P2 and Amityville, The Awakening, one of like the 25 sequels that movie came out with, something like that. Now, this uh, film was written by uh, Alexander Aya and Gregory Lavasseur. Now, those two or shall I say three, have worked together in the past, or they have a working history. Um, the two writers uh, worked together on um, Hills Have Eyes, which I believe I had directed, uh, as well as P2, which then Calhoun directed. So they have got a working history together, which is, kind of, which is cool. Now, uh, I'll go through a quick uh, story, and it's a remake, so it's not really any different than the original. So Frank Zito, uh, this time played by Elijah Wood, uh, there is a change in the setting. The, the original was New York City and it was dark, dirty, grimy, slimy. As a lot of people say, you need a, a shower uh, right after seeing it. And yeah, I totally agree. Uh, this one, though, was set in L.A. Now, the setting definitely isn't near as grimy or dirty as the original. Uh, there's certainly some attempts. Um, and hey, it's not a clean looking movie. The The settings aren't clean, but it's not quite as dirty as the original. But here it is set in LA. And yeah, he's going out killing women, um, scalping them. I believe in this, he scalps every single one of his victims in the original it may have been just a couple that he had done, but uh, just to go along with the original, the kills are violent. They're brutal. Uh, no holds barred violence uh, going on. Uh, as I said, saw the effects were done by Greg Nicotero. More on him later. Um, but uh, like the original, again, Zito meets um, 
this woman named Anna that I would say in the original he was more it was more of he's setting her up as a victim and this one he's actually wanting her to be his lover um even though I know that's not going to work um he is so messed in the head so there's a little different a little different approach uh towards her character and and as well with Anna there is a little bit more meat on the bone with her character as well she's an artist um uh played by uh Nora Arnazetter uh who's a French actor now uh she does a really good job as well as Wood um but uh what she does is she's um looking for mannequins in fact for an art exhibit she's going to put on and Zito he restores them uh to go along with that though he also puts the scalps and clothing of his victims on these mannequins and then in his mind believes they are his girlfriends uh as well as the victims are like the mother uh as in with the original once again um she certainly is the reason why um zito has become such a horrible person or has a horrible mental illness um her having sex and doing drugs in front of her son when he was just a small child and in fact it reminds me quite a bit of Henry Lee Lucas serial killer uh in the states i believe in the late 70s uh to go along with um uh a movie based upon him uh Henry Portrait of a Serial Killer which is really an amazing film um and definitely a a, a film that's hard to swallow and hard to uh sit down without some some definitely disturbing images and um characters on the screen. Now as I said, uh both Arne Zetter and Wood put in some very good performances and really um they uh alone need to carry this film and they do. And they uh as I said do a really good job. Now it was more difficult I would say for Wood because and this is another thing uh, the film is shot through his POV or from his point of view not the entire movie but almost all of it and at one time I thought what would it be like to see a movie like that now personally um I wouldn't shoot a film like that but and on the first watch I enjoyed it but it became almost old to me but on the second watch sometimes it takes more than one for me to click into a film even though I enjoyed it I can see where the filmmakers were going with this not being able to get outside of the serial killer's head um out of his body um being inside of him with his madness. Um I like that, I enjoy that. And at the same time, it is interesting that the you are pulled out of his character and it is no longer from his perspective when he um is in the act of committing these horrible crimes. But Wood does a really good job and as I said like on the first watch I wanted to see more of them but on this watch hey you see enough of them so yeah after warming up to that perspective of the film uh much more uh certainly even on the first watch um I think the POV um works most effectively to me and it certainly isn't the first film to do this but when Zito is out in his car and he's on the hunt looking for his next victim. So he's out looking at all these women um walking down the street from his car. I think that is the most effective POV shot in the film is right there as yeah, that 
you you definitely um, are in his uh, body and mind at that time, and it works most effectively there. Now, as I said, Greg Nicotero does the effects to this film, and he's, um, I would definitely say, most known for the show The Walking Dead. Now, an interesting note as well, as uh, he started doing effects um, on George A. Romero's Day of the Dead, Day of the Dead from 1985, a very good zombie flick, and certainly of Romero's zombie flicks, it might have the best effects of all of the Romero films. He helped on that, and guess who was doing the effects on that that film? None other than Tom Savini, who did the effects to the original Maniac. So. It's, it may have been kind of cool for Nicotero to come in and do the effects to this remake of that film. And I think they're very good, uh, very effective gore, very effective shock, uh, which is much needed if you're going to remake a film that brought that back in 1980 with the original Maniac. Now, at times, uh, the gore does seem rather... CGI laced or not quite hands on, but hey, it's um, I still really do enjoy the gore, and it's a bloodbath. And even with the memorable gore scenes from the original Maniac, this one is even gorier than the original. I would state that claim. Now, I found it rather cool when I was watching this and I, and I saw the music was done by Rob. I know Rob. You know Rob. Actually, no, you don't. Uh, this The music was done by uh, Robin Coder. Uh, and I must say, I really enjoy it. It's, um, it's almost got like a 80s kind of vibe to it. In my opinion, the music... Uh, much more like John Carpenter-ish with uh, the keyboards and such, but it was a really good score and it doesn't repeat itself ad nauseum. It's uh, different uh, different tunes are being played during the song and I thought it worked re- quite well with what you're seeing on the screen. Now, uh, there was... a. Uh, Definitely a scene in the film as well where Zito is holding a scalp in the reflection of a car. And it was certainly a nod to the original poster, to the original film, which definitely is a cool poster. And my goodness, it it really got people going crazy. Uh, the people that were against the film or the subject matter of the original film, what with uh, seeing a person uh, from, you know, not seeing their head, but holding a scalp and a big knife and what looks to be something inside of his pants too. But anyways, that's a nod to that poster. Now, uh, there was another scene that I thought was cool as well, where Zito is thinking of himself, but with a mannequin body. It was interesting. It was kind of eerie, uh, a little shocking, and it was a a good effective scene there. Uh, Definitely the parts where it was a little, to me, is when he's like putting the SOS pads on his hands. Ooh, um, yeah, uh, that that, that got under my skin a little bit there, uh, seeing that. And uh, definitely the film had the same ending, really, than as the original, as the mannequins come to life, but they're the victims and proceed to rip Frank Zito apart. And then the police find him and he's laying dead in his apartment. But yeah, this is a a good flick. It's... uh, 10 years old now. I can't believe it's that old. Time flies when you're watching flicks. Uh, But hey, if you like the original Maniac uh, and you're into gore flicks, um, 
this is definitely one worth watching and I enjoyed it. One thing, uh, since I've done my own review on Maniac, I've watched a couple or a few other reviews of the original Maniac, and it seems to be not everyone, but there seems to be this thought that it's not a film worth, not not a film that they would like to rewatch um, very often. I'm kind of different on that. Um, it's dirty, grimy, gross, all that, but. I can live with that on 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 the screen. It's actually the remake. Um, I've seen it a couple times now over the past perhaps six months now. Uh, the original I've seen three times in the past year. But it's the remake where I would say, you know, that's the one maybe that I won't revisit quite as often as the original. But it, uh, hey, as I said, it's definitely one worth seeing. So anyways, that was that was fun um bringing to you maniac so anyways i hope you guys uh, when you get there have a happy halloween and remember stay scared